In this chapter, we'll begin to talk about fractions. So let's talk about what a fraction really is first. A fraction represents a part out of a whole. The number on top is called the numerator. And the number on the bottom is called the denominator. The number on top tells how many pieces you have, while the number on the bottom talks about how many pieces the original whole was cut into, or sort of like the size of the pieces. So let's look at the fraction 4 over 9, 4 ninths. This tells us that the whole was cut into 9 pieces. So whatever circle or square you had was cut into 9 evenly um, divided pieces. The four on top tells us that we have four pieces left or four pieces shaded, um, depending on how the question's asked. So in this question, it says, what's the fraction of the shaded area? Well, first of all, we have to look at the whole circle and see how many pieces that circle is divided into. That gives us the denominator. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. So our bottom number is going to be seven. And then it asks how many are shaded. So that's one, two. So our top number will be two. So this is two sevenths. Then it asks what is the fraction of unshaded? Well, there's still seven pieces in our circle. So the bottom number is still seven. But for unshaded, we have five pieces. So the top number will be five. A fraction where the top number is smaller than the bottom number is called proper. A fraction where the top number is bigger is called improper. So which of the following are proper fractions? So if we look at 4 over 1, the first fraction, the top number is bigger. That's not proper. It's improper. The second fraction, 9 over 7, the top number is bigger, so it's improper. The third number, 6 over 6, um, is also not proper because the top number is not smaller than the bottom number. So then we come to 6 over 9. 6 over 9 is proper, so that is one of our answers because the top number is smaller. And the last one, 1 over 5. Again, the top number is smaller, so that's proper. So we end up with two proper fractions. So let's look at this. We're trying to write the fraction of numbers of shaded areas, it says here. So first of all, for the denominator, we look at one whole circle and we see how many pieces it's divided into. It's divided into six pieces, so our denominator is six. So now we need to look at how many pieces are shaded. Well, this circle has six shaded pieces, and this circle has one shaded piece, so we have seven shaded pieces. This is an improper fraction. We have seven shaded pieces out of six total, um, out of six in one whole. So now we want to compare these two fractions. We have seven thirds in the first fraction and five thirds in the second fraction. So think about those circles. The seven thirds means that each circle is cut into three pieces and we have seven pieces shaded. The second fraction means that we have circles cut into three pieces, but we have five shaded. So which is more? Well, seven pieces shaded is more, so we want to open our um, inequality sign to the bigger fraction. We can make fractions that have bigger or smaller numbers as long as we multiply or divide both the top and the bottom number by the same number, the value of the fraction stays the same. These are called equivalent fractions.
And here's a picture of this. In this first circle, we have half the circle shaded. But if we multiply the part that's not shaded and the part that is shaded by 2, we're cutting it, and then we have the next circle, which is, gives us 2 shaded out of 4. Well, if we multiply each of those pieces by 2, then we end up with 4 out of 8. But you can see that the shaded area is exactly the same in each of the circles. Those are equivalent fractions. So in this fraction, it says we want to write, or in this problem, we want to write one-third with a denominator of 18. So to make it equivalent, we multiply or divide the top and bottom number by the same thing. So we ask ourselves, what do we need to multiply by 3 by to get 18? Well, of course, the answer is 6. So we multiply by 6 here to get 18. And that means we have to do the same thing on the top. 1 times 6 is 6. So our new fraction would be 6 over 18. We'll look at this the same way. We start off with 7 over 3, and it tells us we want to end up with 21z. So we ask ourselves, what do we multiply by to get 21z? Well, 3 times 7 is 21, so we need to multiply by 7 on the top and the bottom. But we also want this z, so we need to put a z on the top and the bottom when we multiply as well. So on the top, 7 times 7 is 49. And there's a z as well, 49z over 21z. Notice our first fraction was improper, and that so our second fraction should also be improper. Okay, in this fraction, we have 35 over 14, and it wants us to, to put it in lowest terms or simplify it. So the idea here is that we're going to divide the top and the bottom by the same number. So we look at 35 and 14, and we ask ourselves, well, what goes into both 35 and 14? And the answer is 7. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 7. So 35 divided by 7 is 5 and 14 divided by 7 is 2. And there's nothing else that I can divide 5 and 2 by evenly, so that is simplest. It's in lowest terms. So let's look at this. So first of all, we're going to try to write, notice that our 0, 1, 2, negative 1, they're all spaced out. So we're writing fractions for each of these dots, which means, first of all, we have to figure out how many spaces there are between each number. So if we look between 0 and 1, we have 1 space, 2, 3, we have 4 spaces. So that means that whole is cut into 4 pieces. And that's how we're going to get our denominator. And you can see that that's true between any numbers we look at. There are 4 spaces. So our denominators for everything are going to be 4. So let's look at A first. If we look at A, it's 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right, so our top number is going to be 3 out of 4. If we look at B, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spaces to the right, it's still out of 4 because each hole is divided by f into 4 pieces. This is improper because it's beyond 1. Okay, so let's look at C. How many spaces is it? It's 1, 2, 3 spaces, but it's to the left of 0. So we would have a negative 3 over 4. And then D. is two spaces, so we'd have a two. Now, up here, it says it should be expressed in lowest terms. Well, we can't divide, like in A, we can't divide three and four by anything. In B, we can't divide seven and four by anything. In C, we can't divide three and four by anything. But in D, we can divide. We can divide the top and the bottom by two, which gives us one half. 
So in this last example, we're just going to do A and E. So we'll start with A right here. And this is the same idea. First of all, we have to figure out how many spaces there are between 0 and 1. How many is the whole divided into? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means our denominator will be 8. So then we ask ourselves, how many spaces over is A? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. We can't divide 5 and 8 by anything, so that is our fraction. It's 5 eighths of an inch. So let's do the same thing for E. E is right here. So again, we have to figure out how many spaces there are between the 0 and the 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 spaces. So that's our denominator. And then we look at our how far E is. 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. And then we ask ourselves, can we divide by anything? And we can. We can divide by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So we have 1 fourth of an inch. And that should get you started on your homework.